Hello, welcome to the third in our series of short revision topic videos looking at contestable markets. So in previous videos, we thought about uh, some examples of market contestability, the factors affecting the contestability of an industry and crucially the concept of sunk costs. In this video, we're going to take a look at the analysis diagram that could be really handy to get top marks in your assignments if you get a question on market contestability. So how might the behavior of firms be different in a contestable market? Well, let's take a look at the basic analysis diagram, which would be super useful in a contestable markets question. This looks very much like a monopoly diagram. We have a downward sloping demand curve, a U-shaped cost curves. And uh, that, that's true in a contestable market, by the way, because firms are selling differentiated products, then the demand curve will slope downwards. And if average revenue is falling, then so too must the marginal revenue curve shown in the diagram. Now, the profit maximizing output is Q1, where marginal revenue meets marginal cost. And then if you draw up to the demand curve, you see that the profit maximizing price is P1. So if the market was a monopoly with high barriers to entry, then the firm would maximize profits at output Q1 and price P1. Of course, the cost per unit is C1. So there will be a substantial monopoly profit to be made. And there's the monopoly price shown on our diagram. Now, crucially, crucially, the if the market was to become contestable with freedom of entry and exit and the absence in particular of sunk costs, then it's highly unlikely, unlikely that the price would stay at P1. You see, there's a threat of competition coming into the market. And if the monopoly was to price at P1, a dominant firm, the established business in the market, they were to price at P1, then there would be the threat of new firms, new products entering the market. So in fact, in a contestable market, it's likely that price will be lower than P1 and output higher. In fact, if the market became perfectly contestable, then the existing firm would probably have an incentive to cut their price to P2, shown in our diagram, output Q2 price P2, and uh, that's a price where normal profits are made because average cost and average revenue are equal. Otherwise, new firms would enter the market until normal profits are made. So the key point is that there's no unique price and profit equilibrium in a contestable market. The threat of competition is likely to cause firms to price closer to P2 rather than P1. Due to freedom of entry and exit, existing firms always face the threat of new firms, new products entering the market. And it may well be the case that the threat of entry is sufficient to keep prices closer to a competitive equilibrium and keep profits low. Otherwise, new firms would enter. So what is the key aspect, everybody, of a contestable market? This question comes up so often it's untrue. The key aspect is this. In a contestable market, it's not the number of firms that's important, but the ease by which new firms can enter the market. The threat of competition as, and, as well as actual competition in the market often affects the pricing behaviour of established firms. In a highly contestable market, there is always the risk, the threat of what's called hit and run entry from a challenger. So what do we mean by hit and run entry? Well, hit and run entry is when a business enters an industry to try to take advantage of temporarily high market profits. Perhaps the market profits are super normal, better than normal. Perhaps there's been a surge in demand. Prices have gone up and the existing firms are enjoying good profits or the potential for high profits. And then there's a threat of new firms coming in to make the market more contestable. Uh, there's been tremendous interest and growth of demand for gluten free products. For example, if you go to your local supermarket, often now there's an entire aisle of gluten free products and, and many new products are entering that space. Here's another good example. The market for protein drinks is um, and protein yogurts and all kinds of things, all kinds of foods and drinks. Uh, containing high protein is a fast growing sector, a fast growing segment of the consumer goods industry. And again, lots of firms are trying to muscle their way into the market, if you pardon the pun, 
That's a good example, perhaps, of hit and run entry. The run bit just needs a bit of explanation. If the sunk costs are low, low sunk costs, then the risks of entry come down. You see, if you don't, if you enter the market and it doesn't quite work out for you, uh, you can't make a profitable entry, then the you can you can leave fairly quickly and at relatively low cost. Hence the concept of hit and run. Now, in our next video, we're going to be diving into the important question of whether contestable markets lead to economic efficiency.